Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel Tech with Marco. I'm Marco, I'm a software developer and a DevOps engineer. And as you know, I'm working a lot with Docker and working with Docker implicates storing your data somewhere. And for that, mostly I use Docker volumes. And with Docker volumes, it is easy to store data and manage data within Docker containers. But there's one big question when it comes to backing up your data. So currently I have a lot of Docker containers I use in my daily setup with servers. And I recently came across the question, how do I manage my backups with all the Docker volumes I already have? And there I researched a lot about how to set up a nice backup strategy and my now preferred backup strategy. That's what I want to share with you in this video. So stay tuned and follow me along. So first of all, let's head over to GitHub and I'll show you what a project I came across. This is a project by Often and it's called Docker Volume Backup. And what it makes so special for me is that it's just another Docker container which I can add to my Docker Compose setup. And this Docker container offers a lot of options, how to do backups, where to store them and what to do after the backup uh, has happened. And it gives you a lot of uh, notification options, encryption options and other configuration options. What I really like about the tool is that it's kind of straightforward to set up and it offers a lot of integrations with different storage providers. For example, you can use AWS S3, uh, Filebase, MinIO, which are kind of compatible with S3. You can use any web DAV storage service. You can use SSH for other remote servers. You can use the Azure Blob Storage, which is the pendant of uh, Microsoft for S3. And you can also back up locally to, yeah, I don't know, for example, your just local server and then use some custom script to copy the backup. And what a real killer feature for me is the GPG integration. So I can encrypt automatically my backups and could even store them in a public accessible server. And no one can use them because they don't have the GPG uh, key to decrypt the encrypted backup. Let's head over to my IDE and I'll show you what the setup looks like in a Docker Compose file. So I'm now heading over to the Docker Compose file. And as you can see, we have the first two services. There are, for example, a Docker service, which is called Uptime Kuma, uh, which is, by the way, a really nice monitoring tool. And first of all, we can see it's just easy configured here. We have an image, we have a container name, we have ports, and we have volume where Uptime Kuma is storing its uh, monitoring data. And now we have here a label, which is related to the backup service. I'll explain that one later. And I have also a Mongo database here, for example, just straightforward image, container name, port mapping, and also another volume here. As you can see, this is the Mongo data volume. At the bottom of the Docker Compose file, I declared these volumes as Docker volumes, so they're persistent. And just for showcasing here, we have the Mongo Express, which is just a local web browser viewer for your Mongo database to demonstrate what data is in there. And yeah, I collapse these three services again. Uh, I'll come back to them later. So let's head over to the backup configuration container here. So we have the image, which is called often Docker volume backup. I'm using here the version two. I gave that a container name, which is just backup and restart as always. So now we can mount an environment file. And basically, if you have a really simple setup, you can define every configuration option in that environment file. I named my one here backup.env and in that backup file, uh, we're gonna show that later, uh, I have configured um, common configuration options between the two other Docker services like Uptime Kuma and MongoDB. And now there is a crucial part coming in here. Uh, we have to map certain volumes. So first of all, we have a backup configuration folder here, and this backup configuration folder uh, contains two different configuration environment files. And those two configuration environment files, they relate to one of these two Docker services. One is for the MongoDB and one is for the Uptime Kuma service. And we're mounting that one here into the uh, folder etc slash docker volume backup slash confd. This is just a mechanism of the uh, Docker volume backup container to have multiple backup configurations for different uh, Docker containers. Then we have to mount, you don't have to, but it's a really, ni it's a really nice feature. You can mount the Docker socket into your uh, backup container. And what that does um, with the mount Docker volume socket here, you can stop containers during backup times. And I would really recommend doing that because uh, this prevents uh, data corruption. You better have no corrupted backups of Docker volumes. 
Therefore, I re really recommend that. And now we have the crucial part here. So I'm mounting the Mongo data volume, which I created here at the bottom for the MongoDB. And I'm mounting that into the directory backup slash Mongo data backup. And the option here is read only. So the backup container is not able to write into the uh, volumes, it can only read data from there. And this part of the directory here, you can name that as you want. So I chose here Mongo data backup, so I know what the backup is about. And the same is happening here for the uptime Kuma volume. I'm mounting uh, the volume here into backup uptime Kuma backup. Uh, that's the directory path. And now we can have a look at the Mongo dump environment file. So I'm opening that here in a second tab here. So in order to have multiple backups configured for different containers, uh, we have to declare a backup source for uh, the backup strategy here. And the backup source is backup slash Mongo data backup. And that one has to match with the path which we have in the backup uh, volume mounts here. And this is Mongo data backup. And uh, this one also refers to the Mongo data backup. So this environment file here is the configuration for this Mongo data backup strategy. And now we can head over and um, create a different, uh, create a backup name. Now we can create a backup file name here. And this one is my daily Mongo data backup. And then uh, the year variable, monthly variable, daily variable, then the time is coming, the hour, the minute, and the second. And this one has the ending.archive. Uh, this one is a feature here which is called backup pruning prefix. This is the beginning of the part up here, backup file name. And the backup retention days is seven days. So um, I'm keeping the backup for seven days. And after seven days, the latest one is deleted. And for this backup strategy, I only want to delete uh, backups which are starting with the name Bay daily Mongo data backup. Therefore, I have to define the backup pruning prefix and uh, now is a special part here, the exact label, which I named Mongo here. And uh, as you can see, we have some labels here configured at the Docker containers. And at the Mongo container, we have the label docker volume backup archive minus pre. And what that does, before the backup part of the backup container is starting, we are executing a shell command here. And what I do here is dumping uh, all the Mongo database here into the tmp slash dumps slash mongodb.archive directory into that file. And as you can see here in the volume mounts, we have the Mongo data volume mounted here into the tmp slash dumps directory. So that means before the backup container is starting the backup, we we are dumping our Mongo database completely into this TMP slash dumps directory. And as this one lays in here, the Docker backup container and not any kind of different um, Mongo database files. So this is a really recommended strategy for backing up databases. So I really would recommend you to not store the whole volume. Uh, for example, you could delete everything here and just mount the Mongo data volume into the whole file system of the Mongo container and delete all the labels here. So that means we just really want to have the database files or the database entries and databases and stuff like that. So this is the recommended strategy for backing up databases. You could also refer that to MySQL and MariaDB and there are a bunch of different databases out there. And now we have another backup strategy implemented. So I'm collapsing here the Mongo uh, and going to the Uptime Kuma, which is, as I mentioned, a nice monitoring tool. And there we don't have these uh, labels, which are called Docker Volume Backup Archive uh, Pre. We have just a different one here, which is called Docker Volume Backup Stop During Backup Time. And I'm opening the Mongo, uh, the Uptime Kuma environment file here next to our Docker Compose file. And there we can see we still have to configure the backup sources directory. This has to match, as I said, the volume mount here. And then we are giving that a different name, a different backup pruning prefix, 
uh, the same retention time and I'm creating here a backup stop container label uptime kuma minus service and I'm referring to this label in the label configuration here and that means when the docker container uptime kuma has this label uptime kuma minus service then this complete docker container is stopped before the backup is taken and at the bottom we also have a backup cron expression so you can enter there any cron expression you want there are a million of possibilities and now we can have a look how that works oh i forgot one thing so let's have a look at the backup.env configuration so this is the general configuration which is valid for the whole docker volume backup container as i said in the beginning we can have different storage backends as amazon s3 or any web dav server and for demonstration purpose here, I use the web DAV server and this is a managed next cloud. In the next cloud, I created a folder which is called docker minus volume minus backup. And this one is uh, referred to the web DAV path. Then I have a username, uh, I have a password to log in. Now there's also another crucial setting here. Um, I'm encrypting my backups with GPG here. Uh, you can just omit that, like delete that out of the configuration if you don't want backups to be encrypted. But I also recommend encrypting backups. So I chose here the passphrase hello test. <laughs> I recommend using a better one here. And as I just put that one in the general configuration here, uh, both backup strategies are using this password. I could also use different passwords for the different backup strategies. And that means I just have to enter the GPG phrase into uh, this passphrase here, for example, uh, into this env environment file. And I could also use a different password for uh, the other backup strategy. But I don't want that. I'm using the same backup strategy. Uh, I'm using the same password here. Uh, I also configured a notification URL here. Uh, you can use email, Slack, Discord. There are a few of them. Uh, they are linked in the description of the backup volume uh, docker container and I set the notification level to info uh, otherwise if you don't set that to info you're only getting errors uh, notified to your notification URL here and now we can start the whole docker compose file here I quickly show you my empty next cloud here so I'm opening my next cloud here and when I'm heading over to files we can see that we have a folder here which is called docker volume backup and uh, if i go in there we can see it's uh, empty and now we can start our um, services here our docker compose stack and as you can see we have now the backup container the mongo container the mongo express container and the uptime kuma container uh, i'm just expanding that here so let's head over to the mongo express for example localhost.8081 and there we have a mongo database I can just enter a test database here and now we have a test database in our mongo here uptime kuma is also sorting so now we have the configuration here so I just created my admin account at uptime kuma here at my local host machine now, for example, if I have to delete or my server is getting destroyed or whatever, uh, I would lose this account, for example, or all this monitoring data in here. And as I don't want that to happen, uh, that's why I implemented my Docker backup strategy here. Now we can head over to the log output of the Docker uh, backup file. And as you can see, we have here a pending cron.d entry with expression every three minutes and uh, the configuration file mongo dot uh, mongo minus dump dot environment there we can see that now the three minutes are over and uh, the docker volume backup archive pre command is running with mongo tab minus archive for the container mongo and um, yeah we have created the file successfully now the often docker volume backup container is encrypting the archive with my gpg key with my passphrase which is hello test uh, the finished running backup task is completed and then um, the next backup is already happening here so we can see stopping one container which has the label 
uptime Kuma minus service. And um, yeah, the uptime Kuma service was shut down and then the backup was taken here and also encrypted with my passphrase. And after that, both of them were uploaded to my Nextcloud WebDAV backend storage. And I also enabled the Slack notification URLs here. So as you can see, we have our app off and backup. And now you can see that the log output was level info and it's uh, yeah created the backup here. And yeah, I just got the notification that everything works. So 12.50, 12.48, and uh, 12.48, so every two minutes. And now we're heading over to our next cloud storage here. And if I'm now reloading the page, I would expect to see some files. And there, so we can see we have the daily Mongo data backup, archive.gpg. And then we have uh, the daily uptime Kuma backup. And uh, yeah, another one just seconds ago. So the two minutes uh, schedule is running. So everything worked perfectly. And now you have encrypted backups of your data. How awesome is that? So that gives me one less headache to worry about. And now one of the reasons why I chose the Docker container often Docker volume backup instead of uh, creating my own backup scripts is I can just include like three configuration files and uh, one sidecar container in my Docker Compose setup. And yeah, easy as that, I have a remote backend configured, I can do cron expressions, I can shut down containers, I can customize my commands in which I can define how the backup in the container is working or if I just want to back up the whole volume. And really easy as that, I have my complete backup strategy implemented. So after you've backed up all your Docker volumes, you are now able to restore your data in the case something is happening to your server or your infrastructure. And yeah, I hope you really enjoyed the video about my Docker volume backup strategy. And I really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up and uh, yeah, uh, just give me a comment. What is your backup strategy? And yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Take care.